Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering human creativity. I am Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is Todd Pettiford, who serves as Assistant Dean for Student Services for the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music. Todd, welcome to the show. Thank you, Aaron. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much. So it's great, and I'm really excited to be able to talk to you. Obviously, CCM is one of our great partners, uh, helped us to co-curate uh, this show. Um, but kind of talking about one of these key roles that you have um, as part of your overall role relating to student services, but that really being about health and wellness um, for students and for performing artists overall. And so I thought that would be a great thing for us to kind of delve into, because a lot of times I certainly know when I was, you know, back in school, that was just not a thing. Uh, and uh, certainly really no administrators or teachers really cared that much about it, even to the point of sometimes when I had some injuries as a violinist, it was kind of like, you know, work through it, get over it. Mm -hmm. And certainly any mental health, um, you know, challenges that I might have faced was like, you know, pull it together, you know, mm -hmm. you're a performer, get to it. Um, and so obviously, I think there's really been a sea change in society. Um, but I'm wondering from your perspective, specifically looking at performing artists, um, how do you see health and wellness um, in terms of the level of its importance, um, the weight we put on it, those types of things? Yeah, well, I think we come from the same era where, you know, it was embedded in us to just push through, or as my mom would say, shake it off. Um, but this is a new day and it's a good new day because, you know, a lot of those stigmas from our physical and mental well-being are, are gone and we are allowed to to share our good times and our not so good times. And hopefully me and my colleagues are here to assist not only students, but our faculty and staff to all collectively be well. And I know that's what my approach and CCM's approach is right now to get a holistic approach to health and wellness, because if, if our students are well, then hopefully our faculty are well, and hopefully our staff are well. So we've got a plethora of things to help uh, facilitate that. Absolutely. And do you find at this point um, among students and even your prior work, uh, you know, at Stanford, are there um, any more typical things? So if we have, you know, a number of, uh, of people in our audience, students or faculty, teachers, administrators experience some of these things. I'm wondering if there are, are aspects relating to health and wellness that you see come up more often than not um, and how you address those. A big one for all of us, I think, is burnout. Uh, you know, we push ourselves, push ourselves, and that's great. I'm not a believer uh, in perfection. And I think we as artists often think we and want to be perfect. Um, I am more of the ilk of let's strive for perfection, knowing that we won't always get there, which hopefully dilutes that stress. But burnout is a big part. Um, the stress of uh, school and or work and our personal lives, many of our students are, are working outside of classes and they're auditioning, looking towards their careers. So there's this juggling act of trying to balance. Um, I think that's a big factor. And then just our overall health and wellness from a mental and emotional perspective. We are living in, as they say, exciting times, but sometimes those exciting times aren't always the best of times. So we've got to learn how to gauge and manage that. So when there's those highs and those lows, we can somehow stay and complete a through line, as we would say in the arts Absolutely. And it is it is such a tough time. And, and I see many students uh, who are impacted by this. So a curiosity, right, because I always look at these issues and I'm like, so but a lot with a lot of issues, there's sometimes pushback, things like that. And with some of the a focus on, on health and wellness, I even serve on the a board of a, a national organization that focuses on, uh, on mental health. Um, but sometimes we run into the stigma and or people who say, you know what, 
you've got to like get it together. You can't worry about these things. What do you say to those at institutions or otherwise um, who are saying that, you know, no, we shouldn't, we, we run the risk of, of um, coddling or right, those types of things. What do you say to people in terms of, of making the case for the importance of these issues? Yeah, I think we need to re-envision what we think of coddling and more so as cultivating. You know, we are cultivating artists to be great musicians and actors and singers and technicians. Um, and if that means making sure they are getting sleep and they're eating and taking breaks, I don't see that as coddling. I see that as cultivating them from an artistic perspective and then, uh, again, the holistic perspective so that they're going out into the work world and able to do the best performance that they can but they're also taking care of themselves off stage because if that is not in balance, then they're not going to give their best in that moment on stage. So, so true. So true. And I love that going from coddling to cultivating and sometimes kind of just write a key phrase like that helps people to get it and to understand the Absolutely. importance and how it's, it's, it is obviously cultivating and empowering uh, not just young people because so many, even, you know, adults or administrators have, uh, some of these challenges as well. So for some in our audience, right, who are out there, uh, they might be like, you know, either I am experiencing some of these issues, uh, I can't get enough sleep. I There's just not an option. I can't count the number of students, right, who come to me and are like, sure, it's great to get enough sleep, but like, professor, tell me where. I just can't. I've got this. I've got rehearsal. I've got class. I've got studying. Um, and uh, so for those in our audience who are like, well, these things you know, are nice as ideas, but in my day-to-day -day life practice, I'm finding it hard. Are there any key tools or mechanisms that you've identified or come up with that, that you could share that kind of could help empower people? Yeah, and that's just something that I try to do. Um, well, a, a former president of one of my former institutions said that he takes breaks every 45 minutes. Whatever he's doing, he tries to stop every 45 minutes and just step away from that. Now, I know that can be difficult for a lot of us, particularly students. I'm not telling a student at 45 minutes into the classroom, just walk out. But if you can find moments, even within a class, though, for example, breathing. I know that sounds so simple, but just taking moments to breathe. Um, uh, singers really think about that. Instrumentalists who often for woodwinds and other uh, instruments that use air, you have to breathe to get the correct sound out, but we also need to breathe to be able to give ourselves clarity and thought and rest um, and even deep breaths. Sometimes I just try to take two or three deep breaths. So that's a very simple one, but I think that's a really good tool for all of us to do at any given time. And of course, just eating and sleeping. I keep repeating that, but those are so essential and so important. And you know, it's sometimes exactly that. I'll talk with students and you just ask them, well, so when is the last time you slept? Or how, what is your what are your eating patterns like? And it's sometimes amazing how we just lose those basics and then that creates an exponential kind of compounding impact yeah. on the rest of our health and, and wellness. So these are, these are key things. Um, and there at CCM, uh, I'm curious, um, either in the community of Cincinnati or specifically at the College Conservatory, are there any either opportunities or things that you've created that you're like, you know what, these are really working. Here's some examples of what we're doing here at CCM that we might want to share with, with others. Yeah, we're trying to look at it from, again, all angles and all areas. And my first thought is from an academic perspective, there are some classes that students are able to take that really speak to health and wellness. We've got a mind-body wellness course that that gives you the principles of meditation. Um, there's a brand new course this semester called Body Mapping, which is preventative for injuries for artists. That starts that just started last week. Um, our orientation week was two weeks ago, I believe. And we had this pop-up meditative moment where in our main atrium, if you've ever been here, it's this beautiful atrium, we had musical chairs. Uh, and it was great because we had this music. We had students going around on the chairs. But before we started that, we just had them sit there and just breathe and get to a space of openness and availability. And then we just 
acted crazy and had fun like kids doing musical chairs. So that's academic. We have some technological aspects. There's a lot of in-house UC University of Cincinnati apps like Tau, which is the, um, I wrote this down because I couldn't remember, therapy assistance online, uh, which kind of helps guide you to uh, therapy if and when needed. We have um, an equity and inclusion app, which is a big part of wellness, in my opinion, and should be in integrated in everyone's thought process. Uh, there's something called Reach Out through our counseling and psychological services for students, faculty, and staff to identify key factors that might be uh, manifested in a student that's in crisis, or even if yourself, you're experiencing some crisis. Uh, and actually, most important, probably right now, we have a COVID check app. COVID is still here. Um, so we have a, a check app where you can put in your symptoms if you have them or a self-report so that we don't, so we're safe, basically. So those are some, some there's many more, um, but those are a good start. And it's important for us to remind ourselves of those, just not to put them out there once, but throughout the academic year um, and in a lot of different ways as well. Email, doing pop-ups in person, going to classrooms, all different ways, as many as we can. I, I love that. And that is just kind of a host of assets that yeah. are available uh, for the community. And I definitely encourage uh, everyone watching to think about these resources. They are so critically important for, for students and for our entire communities, for sure. Us, us uh, quote unquote adults uh, definitely uh, need to pay attention to these issues as well. Yeah. Um, and I definitely see that, have seen that, and especially in terms of burnout, things like that, and, and the, you know all the events of uh, the last couple of years. Absolutely. So unfortunately, we're just about out of time, but I always like to ask for all of my guests, um, you know, that in this work that you're doing, and I loved also that you mentioned about the importance relating to DE and I, um, but whether it's relating to health and wellness or especially DE and I issues, sometimes of which can be a little controversial, there's got to be tough days for you. Um, yeah. And where Todd is looking to see, you know, where do you find the strength as a leader? Um, and, and as someone who's able to implement all of these important things that impact so many lives. And I'm curious, as a leader, where do you look for that strength or for that inspiration in the toughest of times? Uh, that's a really good question for all of us to ask ourselves. And I'm thinking about something that I ask students often in my office, particularly those that are in a moment of stress or anxiety or crisis. And the question that I ask is, what brings you joy? And what's great is when even in that moment of disparity, they immediately say, I love my cat. My cat brings me joy or going for a walk. Um, and when they respond very quickly, I say, find a way to do that today. Um, what's struggling for me is when I ask that question and, and they can't give me an answer. Uh, and I say, your job is to go find what brings you joy and do it. So that's what I do for myself. For me, Joy is ice cream, joy is music, joy is the movies, joy is my my parents, my family, my friends, my nephew, um, even just giving thought to that and trying to connect with those things as much as possible. So I say, ask yourself on a regular basis, what brings you joy? <laughs> I love that. And I love a lot of the things that bring you joy. So because uh, I definitely uh, share those uh, for sure as well. <laughs> well, Todd Pettiford, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human creativity in our world. Thank you so much for being Thank on the you. show. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.